Hello, thanks for tuning in again. In this video I'd like to explain my process of capturing images whilst on a, a photographic shoot in the Lake District around Buttermere, which is my favourite place in the Lake District. I've been visiting Buttermere now for probably 15 years or more, um, photographically capturing images from all around the lake and the village there. So on this particular day, the purpose of my trip, twofold really, one was to have a nice walk out with the kids and the second was to test out this camera the Hasselblad X1D um, it's a camera I'm very interested in uh, as an addition to my photographic equipment which hopefully will enable me to capture detailed landscape photographs which I sell as prints on my photographic website jamesbellphotography.co.uk so Buttermere, like I say, it's in the northeast corner of the Lake District. It's um, sorry, the northwest corner of the Lake District. It's an absolutely beautiful location. It's so photogenic in in any kind of weather. It's very difficult to uh, to take a bad shot there. I think it's uh, it's just one of those locations that's stunning in every direction. So we set off in the late afternoon to be able to. Uh, do a bit of a walk, see how energy panned out and see how far I could get on this little walk. It's a very low level walk, there's no inclines, there's no hills involved, it's just a decent path all the way around the lake shore there. Now one of um, the things I, I'm trying to do with my landscape photography going forward is to concentrate more on having days out or trips out instead of just going to one location, taking a shot and then going home. I want it more to be more of an experience. And the type of photography I enjoy taking is what I would probably call more documentary style. It's, um, you know, I don't go to a location and just take two or three shots like some might choose to do. You know, I like to take shots quite regularly. You know, I, I see a lot of things what inspire me to, to capture that image, if you will. So I've always run two camera systems really side by side. One. One is the um, Sony A7R II, which has always been my B camera, if you will, and my main A camera, the main camera I used on a tripod with my collection of lenses was the Canon 5 DSR. Um, I've been a Canon user for the last 20 years and very satisfied with their products and, and all the images I've produced with Canon. And 95% of all the images on my website, which are for sale as prints, they're shot with Canon equipment and I've never had any reason to complain about that. In the, you know, the Sony have been developing some great cameras for um, pro-consumer level things in the last few years, and I purchased the Sony A7R II, <coughs> excuse me, when that was launched a couple of years ago, I think it was now, or getting on for two years. And I think since then, it's really changed my approach to photography if you will it's such a capable technically advanced camera that you can hand hold a lot of shots where otherwise you would need uh, a tripod because of the inbuilt stabilization into the camera there the sensor is such a, um, a it's such a dynamic sensor in the sense that you can capture images and recover shadow or recover highlights what I wasn't able to do on the Canon system and I find it a very versatile and almost forgiving camera. It can, it, you know, you can almost do away with filters to, to some degree because of the flexibility within the sensor. So I think for the last year or so, I've pretty much gone down the route of focusing just on the Sony equipment. And it's been great, you know, I've got some great results. I do, part of me does miss the tripod, slowing things down, taking a few images and setting you know, up. But in the search for clarity for what I do for, for my photography, it's, um, it's two types of photography when I do landscapes. It's the slow down technical shots on a tripod, but it's also the documentary style, see something and quickly shoot it. And I think the Sony is a fantastic camera for, for both of those things. And especially for the documentary style photography, it's quick to focus, it's fast, it's light, it's it's everything a camera needs to be to be, be able you to capture images quickly, I think. And obviously with the introduction of the Sony A9 camera now, that's going to take that to another level altogether in terms of speed. So hof hopefully there'll be a, an A9 
uh, R which comes out, which is a development on the A7R2 here. But anyway, I'm digressing off of the main point of this discussion, which is to showcase you some images taken from Buttermere. And what, what I've done with this camera is I've borrowed it again from my local camera shop who've kindly lent me this for uh, a few days. And I've, I've taken images with this on three occasions now, once at Buttermere, once just around Woodland where, where I'm based, and once on the beach for sunset. And on the um, Buttermere shoe with this, it was used solely on a tripod. And with the purpose of just seeing, and if I take my time and slow the process down, what can I actually capture with this, this piece of equipment here? You know, can it have a place in my bag? And is it worth the investment for me? So in this video, I'm going to showcase you some of the images what were captured around Buttermere with um, with this camera. Also, with the um, all the video was captured on the Sony A7R2. I also took my Leica MD and captured some images on that. I think I'm going to address those images in a separate video because I'm conscious, you know, this could be a long video. So in this specific video, we're going to focus on the Hasselblad X1D locked down on a tripod taking landscape photographs. So approaching Buttermere, um, the lake itself is very photogenic. It's a nice body of water with large fells and mountains surrounding um, each side of it, if you will. So there's a good view in most directions. And like I say, I was, the plan was to arrive there um, later in the afternoon so that by the time we've done the walk, the, the best of the day's light, if you will, the, the golden hour, the last hour or two of the day where the sun's very low would give me the best chance of capturing some inspiring images around this area. So as, as I approached the lake, there was, I remember there being some um, rocks in the foreground there, typical landscape photography setup really, you know, uh, a shoreline, a body of water, some rocks and, and the distant fells in the background. And it was my first real chance to take images with this camera with the uh, with the tripod. And I'll showcase you those images on this video now. Moving on from there, we had um, a little walk up to a small bridge over a stream where the water runs down the side of a red pike there, which is uh, one of the dominant mountains above Buttermere. Um, by this point, I'd swap to this lens, which is a 90 millimeter lens, which is, a, I think, about the equivalent of a 70, 75 millimeter on a 35 uh, millimeter camera system. And I was just using this to capture some details within the rocks and the stream around this area. And it was, it was quite an enjoyable process, actually. You know, looking within the landscape, a, a bit like on my previous trip with the, the Leica MD on the Brothers Point Beach there. So I was using this to capture some details. Uh, it, by this point in the day, it was the light was pretty harsh. It was the sun was high, so I was focusing more on details in the shadows as opposed to the wider vista at this point. Uh, continue along the shore um, path. It, the hills are very steep along along the side there, so the sun can quite quickly dip behind the mountain. But as it did so, um, I noticed that you look up into the the woods, if you will, and it's very dark on on the ground but the the tops of the trees are illuminated by the sun setting behind the mountain and one thing i've noticed with this camera is it produces the colors what come out of the um the camera body straight out of the camera with no adjustments they're absolutely fantastic it's it's a real pleasure to see these files they, they do look very interesting and this one image i'll share with you on screen now is testament to that really i've done no adjustments to that image whatsoever and it's usable straight out of the camera, which is quite rare for a digital camera, I believe. You know, usually files do need a bit of adjustment. So moving on from there, around um, around bottom here there, the exciting part of this walk for me is, is at the southern end where um, you get towards Haystacks and Fleetwith Pike and Warren Scale. And that's uh, a place I've had a lot of success with in the past, especially up on the mountains with my retreat image, which I'll share with you on screen now. And that's, um, that's an image looking back down over Buttermere and the valley what uh, I'm walking at the moment. So this stretch, it's always a very pleasant scenic route, if you will, and there's some good paths everywhere, so it's nice and easy and very accessible. Um, and some 
nice images to be had this by this time of day because the, as, as I said the lights dipping down a bit and adding a bit more interest into the into the scene there you cut through a farm um, Gatesgarth farm I believe it's called just uh, at the southern end and obviously we're in uh, April now springtime so there's a lot of lambing going on in the Lake District and there's one particular uh, stretch of this path where there was some um, sheep in, in a pen if you will or in a little field with their, their young lambs there and the kids enjoyed playing around with those and uh, I captured some interesting footage of these young little lambs jumping around it's uh, it's a great time of year spring you know when everything's coming back to life after a, what always seems like a long cold winter to me uh, so continuing back it's a simple walk along the road from here and um, what's uh, quite interesting about this this particular stretch of the walk was obviously the farmer who, who farms this part of, of the uh, Lake District. They have different fields where they put their, their livestock in and um, in this one particular field there must have been all the ewes that, that have got one baby <laughs> due if you will or one lamb due and in this particular field we actually witnessed um, a lamb being born there. We, ju we got there just after it had made its debut into the world yeah. if you will but we saw it stand up for the first time and uh, that was quite quite something really. Um, Thomas did a bit of videoing with the um, A7R2 while I took some shots with the Hasselblad here and it was a real moment to see actually. It was uh, amazing how these things pop out and within five minutes they stood up running around. You know, Whereas us as humans it can take us a year or two to even get on our feet so it's, uh, it's quite fast how they develop. So from there it's just a walk back into Buttermere, uh, back to the car and, and that was pretty much the end of the walk really. Uh, I managed to capture a fantastic sunset on the uh, on the way back up through the Newlands Valley there looking back over Buttermere and I'll show you the image I captured there here now. Um, so my first shoot with the, the Hasselblad X1D, um, every shot was taken well pretty much every shot was taken apart from the last few shots which um, they were all taken on a tripod the last few shots walking along the road were handheld and there's one image I want to show you actually um, which I'm, I might showcase more, in more detail in a further video where I go into details of the files that come out of this camera but the um, there's an image I'll put on screen now of this little cottage with the sun going down behind it and I think this image just shows you the breadth of capabilities of the, the medium format sensor within this camera. So there you go, there's, um, there's a quick overview of Buttermere and my favourite place in the Lake District. It's, uh, it's a place I, I love going to and it's a place I would encourage you to visit to as well if you go into the English Lake District. It's a beautiful location. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your interest in my content, my video, and I thought this video might be of interest to some of you out there who are like me, considering the Hasselblad X1D as a potential landscape photography camera. Um, I'm, I'm going to run through a, another video shortly on the usability, the operations, the ergonomics and all those things, but for now this is just a showcase of my first landscape photography shoot, and uh, thanks for investing time in my content again. If you think I'm doing a good job, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribing already, please consider subscribing. There's lots more content coming soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. All the best.